In my last video, I said how humanoid cryptids might be the most eerie ones, but I take it back because bug cryptids are definitely in that conversation. The idea of people encountering giant bugs that are up to 6 feet high just sounds terrifying. So in this video, we'll be covering exactly that, being the bug cryptid iceberg. Alright, let's get straight into the video now with the first entry of tier 1, Conrit. The Conrit is a sea cryptid reported primarily in the waters around Vietnam and is known as a giant centipede-like sea monster. This creature is said to possess a body made of segmented bony plates and uses fish-like fins to swim. If you ever had a phobia for centipedes, this creature is basically that but 10 times worse. It's been characterized as a very aggressive creature, capable of attacking and injuring humans. The creature is believed to navigate by sensing vibrations in the water, which it then rapidly moves towards its source. Some accounts describe the Conrad as having a mouth with sharp, strong teeth resembling a beak, like squids or octopuses. There are also claims that can release jets of boiling water. Historically, the first mention of a huge predatory worm appears in the 17th century. It happened when a fisherman named Wu Yu Li reportedly caught a conrit in his net. The creature then allegedly splashed boiling water in all directions and escaped back into the sea. One of the earliest documented encounters though was in 1883 when a decapitated carcass washed ashore in Vietnam. The headless body was formed of segmented joints and reportedly had a terrible smell, leading it to be towed away back to the sea. This sighting, however, was only reported 38 years later to Dr. A. Krempf, casting a veil of doubt and mystery over the encounter. And in 1899 even, sailors aboard the HMS Narcissus near Cape Falcon, Algeria, report seeing a sea monster approximately 135 feet in length with a vast number of fins, keeping pace with their ship for about 30 minutes before disappearing out of their gaze. Jabba Fofi The Jabba Fofi, also known as the Congolese giant spider, is a cryptid reputed to reside in the Congo's forests. It's described as a giant spider with a lifespan of at least 3 to 4 feet, starting off yellow in color after hatching and then becoming dark brown with a purple mark on its abdomen after it matures. According to the Baka people of the Congo, the Jabba Fofi builds large webs between trees and hides in a burrow, waiting to chase prey into its web before injecting powerful venom. The first encounter with a creature resembling the Jabba Fofi was reported by English missionary Arthur Sames near Lake Nyasa. He and his men reportedly became entangled in a giant web and were attacked by two huge spiders measuring 2-4 to four feet in length. Another significant sighting occurred in 1938 involving Reginald and Marguerite Lloyd in the then Belgian Congo. They report seeing a giant brown tarantula-like spider 3-4 to four feet long which frightened Miss Lloyd so much that she demanded they return home immediately. There's theories out there suggesting that these stories might be exaggerations of encounters with large but known species of spiders like the baboon spider native to Africa. This spider can have a leg span of up to 11 inches and a body length of up to 4 inches, but it's significantly smaller than the Jabba Fofi described in these legends. Mongolian Deathworm The Mongolian Deathworm, also known as Algoi Korkoi in Mongolia, meaning intestine worm, is one of the most mysterious and feared cryptids in Central Asian folklore. These accounts, primarily originating from nomadic tribes of Mongolia, describe encounters with this fearsome creature. One of the earliest recorded sightings dates back to the early 20th century when western explorers first heard tales of the death worm from Mongolian locals. The creature was described as a large worm-like entity capable of emitting deadly toxins. Expeditions were mounted by adventurers and scientists alike, but none were successful in capturing evidence of its existence. A notable account came from Czech explorer Ivan Maclery, one of the leading investigators of the Mongolian death worm in the late 20th century. Markley's fascination with the creature led him to conduct several expeditions into the Gobi Desert. He compiled numerous first-hand accounts from local residents who described the worm as a creature of the sand, able to kill at a distance either by spitting venom or by electric discharge. He even used techniques from the novel Dune to try to find the creature. Mackerel's research suggests that the death worm was more than just a physical entity and that it was deeply ingrained in the local culture and consciousness. The locals he interviewed were convinced of its existence and feared its lethal abilities. They advised avoiding the death worm, especially during the hot months of both June and July when it was believed to be the most active. The stories and sightings of the Mongolian deathworm vary, with some describing it as a creature capable of burrowing under the sand and emerging unexpectedly to attack. Others recall occurrences where it appeared in the open desert, startling and frightened those who encountered it. Alright, now moving on to tier 2. Beast of Brunei The Beast of Brunei is a cryptid that has sparked quite some curiosity and interest in cryptozoology. This mysterious creature, first brought to attention in 2013, was represented on the animal identification website Project Noah as being captured and photographed in Brunei. The image and description of the Beast of Brunei led to various commentaries and investigation by cryptozoologists, including Carl Schunker. 
There's speculation about the nature and classification of the Brista Brunei, with comparisons drawn to various types of known creatures. Some have noted similarities to Antelon larvae, while others have drawn parallels to certain concept designs from science fiction, such as the Seti seal from Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. This is because several concept designs for the Seti eel actually do exhibit features that are somewhat reminiscent of the Brista Brunei, including an armored body and distinctive cersei. Despite these comparisons though, the Brista Brunei doesn't correspond to any physical known crustaceans or other invertebrates. While it has been suggested that it might be an adult female or juvenile tribolite beetle of an undescribed species, the morphology and churchy of the beast really differ from any known species. There's also the possibility that the cersei are not part of the animal but something upon which it is resting or an added element. Some have considered the idea that the Brista Brunei could be an unofficial replica of a seti eel or another artificial creation far in a river in Brunei. But I think recently it was confirmed as a hoax though as apparently a Swedish filmmaker made the creature as a model. Moving on to tier 3, Juventka Worm. The Juventka Worm, a cryptid from Polish folklore, is particularly known in the Masozui region of Poland. Its unique name Juventka, meaning 9 in Polish, comes from its distinctive physical characteristic. The body of the worm is divided into 9 segments, with each segment purportedly bearing an eye-like spot. This peculiar creature was first chronicled in the 19th century by the eminent Polish ethnographer and folklorist Oscar Kohlberg in his work Mazowiecki, Tom 7. It was described as being the size of a human finger and known for its dark coloration. Anthropologist Oliver Wells, who recorded cultural interviews with Pacific Coast peoples between 1958 and 1968, related an account from Albert Louis, a Skawa man who, who claimed to observe the Jivantka worm. According to Louis' account from 1965 or 1967, he saw these creatures swimming or crawling around at the bottom of shallow, clear water while hunting ducks. He described them as black in color and larger than his hand with big black hands similar to a crab's. Also, Louis was warned by his grandfather about the worm's dangerously venomous bite. It was said that after 9 days of the creature biting someone, it would result in their death. Since the number 9 was also associated with magic and mysticism, you can see how it would have caused a bit of fear in the local parts. Despite its intriguing description though, Clover's account is primarily based on local or traditions, and not really any confirmed sightings. Therefore, his work offers limited details about the worm's actual behavior or ecology. Giant Lacewings in Eastern United States The giant lacewing, a remarkable insect thought to have been vanished from the Eastern United States for over 50 years, was rediscovered in a place you wouldn't really expect, being just outside of Walmart in Fayetteville, Arkansas. This find, dating back to 2012, but only identified years later, represented a significant discovery in the world of entomology and raised some pretty cool ecological questions. Michael Scavarla, an entomologist at Penn State University, initially collected the specimen, mistaking it for an antleon. However, during a virtual class on biodiversity and evolution, a closer examination revealed it wasn't an antelion after all. This led to the realization that the specimen was in fact a giant lacewing, a species dating back to the Jurassic era over 100 million years ago. The identification of this rare insect was later confirmed through extensive research, including analysis of historical records and the specimen's physical characteristics. Giant lacewings, known by their roughly 2 inch wingspan and nocturnal habits, were once widespread across North America. However, they seemingly vanished from eastern North America after the 1950s. The reasons for the disappearance are not entirely clear, though factors like invasive species, urban development, wildfire suppression, and light pollution are suspected contributors. Vampire Caterpillar The giant vampire caterpillar is a cryptid reported by 23-year-old Geoffrey Anderson in Edinburgh, Scotland in 1904. Anderson's encounter took place on the 22nd of November at the intersection of Princess Street and Hanover Street. He described seeing a mysterious black shape about 4 feet long and 2.5 feet high, emerging from a gutter. This shape, which lacked visible legs, was described as being hourglass shaped and moved rapidly, resembling a large caterpillar. The creature then quickly approached a horse and carriage standing near a shop across the street. According to Anderson, it moved about 15 feet towards the horse and suddenly leaped at the animal's throat. It clung there briefly before simply just vanishing. The horse reacted with the tense fear, rearing up and trying to strike at something. Anderson, along with a passerby, managed to calm the horse down. The incident occurred under bright electric lights with additional illumination from nearby window shops, which sort of added a bit of credibility. Anderson explained he was baffled by the appearance of this creature, noting that his mind was preoccupied with ordinary mundane thoughts before witnessing this unexplainable event. Tier 4 Salish Sea Underwater Flies the underwater fly, a lesser known cryptid, is reported to inhabit the tide pools along the coast of the Salish Sea and the North Pacific Ocean, 
particularly around British Columbia and Haida Gwaii in Canada. And I couldn't really find pictures for the cryptid, so what you might see isn't too exact of its representation. The cryptid stands out due to its unique description as a large arthropod, bearing resemblance to wingless flies and crabs in its physical structure. The existence of this fly was brought to light through the cultural research of Oliver Wells, an anthropologist active between 1958 and 1968. He conducted tape interviews with indigenous people of the Pacific coast, gathering a wealth of cultural and folklore information. In these interviews, particularly those conducted in 1965 or 1967, Wells spoke with Albert Louis, a man from the Skawa community. Louis shared his personal encounters with the underwater fly, which he witnessed while duck hunting in the region's shallow, clear coastal waters. Louis' description of this fly is both intriguing and detailed. He depicted them as black creatures larger than a human hand, with sizable black appendages resembling the claws of a crab. He emphasized their alarming presence, knowing their ability to swim or crawl around the seabed. A significant aspect of his account was a warning he received from his grandfather about the potentially lethal venomous bite, adding a layer of danger and mystique to these creatures. Molilo Slug the Molilo is a cryptid said to inhabit the dense rainforest near the Congo, Zaire, and Zambia regions. This creature, often described as a giant slug, is believed to reach an insane length of 6 feet and a width of about 12 inches. Its coloration varies, ranging from grayish white to brown, and even black in some reports. One of the most mythical aspects of the Molilo slug is its supposed appearance, only during the presence of a rainbow, along with the belief that it has a poisonous breath. These giant slugs are thought to climb trees slowly and local folklore suggests that natives would capture them using cages, luring them with their roosters. The Molilo's flesh is rumored to possess magical properties, making it a sought-after creature in local mythology. As for its potential identity, several theories exist. One is that the Molilo could be a Limix maximus, the largest known slug species, predominantly found in Europe but speculated to exist in parts of Africa. Another possibility is that it could be an unidentified species of Cecilion, which are limbless, serpentine amphibians. Additionally, the black variant of the Molilo might be a melanistic form of the Gaboon Viper, a venomous snake that shares a similar size profile. The Gaboon Viper's stout and slow nature could lead to its misidentification as a giant slug, so it is reasonable. Japanese Germs of the 16th Century The Harikigaki, a 16th century Japanese medical text housed in Japan's Kyushu National Museum, presents a unique perspective on diseases that has to do with cryptids. Authored in 1568, this manuscript attributes illnesses to minuscule creatures called Haranomushi, or belly bugs, which it claims infiltrate the human body. It's sort of a blend of parasitology and folklore, reflecting the era's fusion of local beliefs and Chinese medical thought. Initially, diseases were thought to be spread by evil kami, or gods, in human form, but later, the concept evolved to envision them as tiny bugs, capable of entering the body. The text, which also discusses acupuncture, is noted for its colorful and distinct illustrations of 63 different mushi each believed to cause specific ailments. While modern science may dismiss these entities as mythical yokai, the Harikigaki was a serious and groundbreaking work in its time. The overall text stands out for its focus on parasitology, which is a subject rarely explored in Japanese literature of that era, making a valuable historical artifact. The book's approach to understanding and treating illnesses through the extermination of these bugs, using acupuncture and herbs, shows the historical evolution of medical theories and practices in Japan. Glitterfly the glitter fly is a cryptid or mythical creature reported to inhabit some regions of the United States. It's described as an insect-like entity, and its name reflects its shimmering or glittering appearance, reminiscent of the sparkle of a butterfly's wings in sunlight. The glitter fly is said to be larger than our typical known butterflies, with some accounts suggesting a wingspan that could be several inches across. The historical accounts of the glitter fly often emphasize its mysterious nature, with sightings being rare and usually occurring in specific, secluded natural environments. Witnesses describe the glitterfly as a mesmerizing sight, with its sparkling wings catching the light in a way that seems almost unnatural or otherworldly. Some stories attribute magical or supernatural qualities to the glitterfly, suggesting that it possesses abilities beyond those of ordinary insects. Despite its captivating description though, the existence of the glitterfly still remains unconfirmed by scientific research. The lack of tangible evidence such as photographs or specimens has led many to categorize the glitterfly as a creature of legend or a product of imaginative folklore. It does sound really interesting though. On to tier 5, Surviving St. Helena Giant Earwig. The St. Helena Giant Earwig was a unique species native to the remote island of St. Helena in the South Atlantic Ocean. It was discovered by Danish entomologist Johann Christian Fabricius in 1798 and it held the title of the world's largest earwig, with sizes reaching up to 8 centimeters. The species was particularly notable for its significant size, 
contrasting sharply with the relatively small dimensions of other earwig species. For a long period, the St. Helena giant earwig was confused with a more familiar and smaller shore earwig and received little attention from the scientific community. It was only in 1962 that ornithologist Douglas Dorward and Philip Ashmole rediscovered the species when they found some enormous dry tail pincers during their search for bird bones. This led to a renewed interest in the species, and in 1965, live specimens were found in burrows under boulders at Hort Point Plain at St. Helena. Despite this brief resurgence and attention, the fate of the St. Helena giant earwig was grim. The last time it was observed alive was in May 1967 during a Belgian research expedition. Since then, no sightings have been reported despite several search efforts in subsequent years from people believing it may still be surviving. The species was declared officially extinct in 2014 by the IUCN due to a combination of habitat destruction and predation by introduced species like rodents and centipedes. Gold Digging Ants The legend of the gold digging ants is an ancient tale originating from Herodotus' work on histories written in the 5th century BC. These mythical creatures described by Herodotus as being larger than a fox but smaller than a dog were believed to inhabit the sandy deserts of India within the Persian Empire. According to a legend, these giant ants unearthed gold dust while digging their mounds and tunnels, and the local people would collect this precious dust. In modern times, the story of these gold digging ants has been reassessed. French ethnologist Michael Piesel proposed that the creatures Herodotus referred to as ants were actually marmots, specifically the Himalayan marmot found in the Desoi Plateau of Pakistan. This area, rich in gold dust, aligns with Herodotus' description of the ants' habitat. Piesel's hypothesis suggests that Herodotus' misunderstanding might have arisen from a confusion between the old Persian word for marmot and mountain ant. Piesel's research included interviews with the Monaro tribal people of the Desoi Plateau, who confirmed that they had traditionally collected gold dust brought to the surface by marmots' digging activities. The Greek ambassador Megasthenes and the Indian epic Mahabharata also mentioned similar stories of gold digging ants, further suggesting that this legend was actually widespread in ancient cultures. The legend seems to have some basis in reality though, as ants and other insects like termites are known to bring minerals and even traces of gold to the surface when constructing their nests. This phenomenon has been noted by geologists and researchers who have observed ants and termites in various parts of the world, including Australia, where termite mounds have been found to contain gold. Miami Beach Scorpion The Miami Beach Scorpion is a reported cryptid seen in the waters off Miami Beach, Florida. This creature is described as a large, scorpion-like animal. There are speculations about its identity, with some suggesting it could be a surviving Eurypterid. Eurypterids, commonly known as sea scorpions, were prehistoric aquatic arthropods that existed before the evolution of the first jawed fish. These creatures were among the dominant marine predators during their time, and the theory that the Miami Beach scorpion could be a Eurypterid is really fascinating, considering these creatures were thought to have been extinct millions of years ago. The size and scorpion-like appearance of the cryptid are consistent with known characteristics of Eurypterids, which were indeed large and had a similar body structure. However, a more plausible explanation could be that the Miami Bee Scorpion is a type of large lobster or lobster-like creature. This suggestion is grounded in a significant evolutionary and geological time gap since the era of the Eurypterids. If they were actually to be alive, it would really impact fields like biology and geology. However, lobsters, which are more common in contemporary marine environments, share some physical similarities with scorpions, such as a hard exoskeleton and clawed appendages, so it could be just a lobster. Mantis Man the Mantis Man is a cryptid reported in Hackestown, New Jersey, near the Musconicong River. This entity, roughly 7 feet tall and resembling a praying mantis, has sparked intrigue because of its anomalous presence near water, an unusual habitat for mantids, which are typically forest dwellers. Both sightings involve men fishing who observed its enormous size and ability to stay stable in the river current. It was said that the Mantis Man, noted for its non-aggressive behavior, tends to flee from human encounters. One significant sighting by an individual named Mr. Strickler described the mantis man as tall, transparent, with a small head and long thin arms, which he said created a striking, almost ethereal appearance. The creature was spotted moving from the river to the trees, with its odd characteristics leaving a lasting impression on him. Explanation for the mantis man's existence vary widely. Some speculate it could be a result of an experimental error or a unique mutation in a breeding scenario like a lap, leading to its massive size. There are also theories suggesting the presence of multiple such creatures. Its mantis-like characteristics, including camouflage and wing spreading, have led some to believe that it may actually be a species of giant mantis we don't know of. Others even propose more exotic theories, including the possibility of it being an extraterrestrial entity considering the current atmospheric condition on Earth would not support a mantis of such size. Just a quick add though, I've always wondered why creatures were so large in prehistoric times, and it was interesting to learn that a lot had to do with the atmospheric conditions. 
Anyways, an alternative hypothesis suggests that the mantis man might just be an aquatic creature resembling a prey mantis. Despite these speculations though, it could have also been a hoax. Alright, onto tier 6, giant spider sightings across the world. Legends of giant spiders, some reportedly measuring up to 5 feet across, have been a subject of interest around the world, even though it sounds terrifying. These monster spiders, as they are often referred to, have been particularly associated with the depths of the Amazon jungle, a place already known for its unique and often dangerous wildlife, including poisonous dart frogs and anaconda snakes. Eyewitness accounts of these monster spiders vary in size and descriptions, but some of the most extreme claims include spiders as long as 5 feet. These enormous arachnids are said to possess huge fangs, sometimes as long as 8 or 9 inches, and hairy bodies comparable in size to small dogs. In a different context though, American GIs in Iraq report sightings of massive flesh-eating arachnids known as camel spiders, which are described as being the size of small cats and capable of speeds up to 25 miles per hour. So uh, good luck running away from those, you know? However, a widely circulated photograph purportedly showing one of these giant spiders was later debunked as a hoax. In reality, camel spiders are not true spiders, but actually close relatives. For now though, the existence of such spiders has not been scientifically proven in modern times. Even though there's accounts of early humans confronting giant spiders, the largest known spider today measures no more than 10.5 inches. However, fossil records do reveal the existence of enormous arachnid-like creatures in the distant past, so who knows if one of them could have survived. Giant Millipede In the summer of 2018, a truck driver in central Minnesota reported the sighting of a cryptid resembling a millipede while driving on a US highway. This creature was described by him as long, skinny, and about 4 feet in length, with a diameter of approximately 3.5 inches and covered in short brown fur. His head was notably cone-shaped, similar to a paper cone cup but larger, with the inside lined with the same fur. The creature appeared to have no legs and moved quickly across the road, in a grass median, hovering a few inches off the ground. The witness, a self-proclaimed skeptic, was really perplexed by the sighting. He contemplated whether it could be a machine, an alien probe, or something from another dimension, as its appearance was actually more mechanical than biological, kind of like a giant millipede robot. The sighting ended up leaving him perplexed and seeking answers. No definite explanation for the creature's existence was provided though, so it still remains a mystery. Lager Float Worm The Lager Float Worm, also known as the Iceland Worm Monster, is a legendary cryptid said to inhabit the Lager Float Lake in a Glastior East Island. This creature has actually been compared to the Loch Ness Monster of Scotland, with its first mention in the Icelandic Annals of 1345. These records, which include sagas and other literature, describe a creature that sometimes appeared like a large island, and at other times showed humps several hundred fathoms apart. According to Icelandic folklore, the origin of the Lagerflot monster involves a young girl who placed a tiny worm on a golden ring, hoping the gold would grow as the worm did. To her horror, the worm grew immensely, but the gold did not. Frightened, she threw the worm in the ring into Lagerfloat, where the worm continued to grow, terrorizing the region with the poison and attacks on people and animals. Numerous settings have been recorded over the century, including a notable one in 1998 by a teacher and her students. The most recent sighting was in February 2012, captured on video by a farmer, although the authenticity of this sighting is debated. Some believe the video shows an ice cake fishing net or a cloth, rather than a monstrous worm. The folklore and sighting of the Lagerfloat worm have become an important part of local culture and history though with various interpretations and explanations offered over time. The creature's description and stories have varied, but the legend continues to fascinate and mystify both locals and visitors to the region. Kajan Oak The Kajan Oak is a cryptid reported in the coastal areas of Greenland and the Canadian Arctic. Described as an aquatic arthropod, it's said to resemble a giant sea spider or a sea scorpion. The whole story is back to the Inuit people of Canada who knew this creature as the Asivarlut, liking it to a massive sea spider like the Huntsman Spider. It was rumored to dwell on the seabed, particularly around shoals and inlets, where it was said to ambush its prey, such as seals. The creature's description varies slightly between regions. In western Greenland, it is depicted as being the size of a whole boat, resembling a sea scorpion. It's said to inhabit specific lakes, including Natsalik and Umanuk. The term sea scorpion sort of correlates back to Eurypteroids from the fossil record, who were known as the largest arthropods ever discovered. However, the association of the Kajanok with ancient Eurypteroids is debated. Though Adrenan, a researcher on such cryptids considers this connection unlikely, suggesting instead that the descriptions might be related to sightings of large marine animals, like the stellar sea cow. Additionally, some sources have proposed that the Kajanok might be a misidentified known marine creature, such as a species of sculpin, which are sometimes referred to as sea scorpions because of their appearance. On to the last tier, surviving Megadite Stilakis. Megadite Stilakis 
A species of water beetle in the family Dytistidae holds the distinction of being the largest in its family. This beetle, which is native to Brazil, had for a long time been known from only a single male specimen. This specimen, collected in the 19th century, is housed in the Natural History Museum now in London. There are rumors that the specimen was discovered in the bottom of a canoe in the lake, but a significant discovery occurred in 2019 when 10 additional specimens, including the first known female of the species, were found. These were also collected in the late 19th century but had remained unnoticed in the National Museum of Natural History of France. The discovery of these specimens was incidental, found in drawers containing unsorted diving beetle collections. Unlike the original holotype, these new specimens provide specific locality data, indicating that they were collected in Santo Antonio da Barra in the southern part of Bahia, Brazil. This region was known for its active insect trade, with villagers capturing very sought-after insect specimens. Despite its listing as extinct by the UICN, the limited research conducted on the water beetles in Brazil and the lack of recent records suggest that Megadites duculus could still be extant. Surviving Rantes Paponos Rantes Paponos, a species of beetle in the Discidae family, was known to be endemic to Papua New Guinea. This beetle was first discovered by Balfour Brownie in 1939 and for a long time it was the only known hull type collected in 1919. The species was listed as extinct by the IUCN because of the lack of recent records and considerations of habitat destruction. However, there have been recent claims of the species being rediscovered in the Sarugat Range, located at the northern west tip of the Hunan Peninsula in Papua New Guinea. This rediscovery says that Rantis paponis might still be extant and possibly endemic to the Sarugat Range. Despite this claim of rediscovery, no cropping source has been provided to confirm the species' current status and thus it remains in the extinct category until further evidence is available. The Rantis genus, to which Rantis paponis belongs, comprises about 100 species distributed worldwide. These species typically inhabit pools and marshy areas. Rantis paponis, being a member of this family, would be expected to exhibit similar ecological preferences. This case highlights the challenges in documenting and conserving biodiversity, especially in regions like Papua New Guinea, which are known to be rich in unique species but often underexplored. Giant Cheops in Russia The Giant Cheops, a creature from Russian folklore, gained significant attention in 2008 when mysterious photographs surfaced on several Russian websites. These images, alleged from Jelyabinsk, depicted a creature that sparked considerable intrigue and debate among both locals and cryptozoologists worldwide. The saga began at a construction site in Chelyabinsk, where workers accidentally tapped into an underground river while digging a deep foundation ditch. The water that accumulated in the ditch didn't drain, creating an eerie, stagnant pool. A few months later, the workers noticed something moving in the water. Being curious, they threw pieces of their lunch into the trench, only to witness vigorous activity from an unseen entity beneath the surface. The climax of the story came when the workers managed to capture one of these mysterious creatures. Measuring around 5 feet long, it was unlike anything they had ever seen before. The creature allegedly tried to bite the workers, leading to a panic reaction where they ultimately killed it using construction equipment. The remains of this creature were what appeared in the photographs. Speculations about the giant triops varied widely, with some theories suggesting that a regular triop, a small crustacean, could have been exposed to radiation, leading to its unusual size. However, traps are not native to the region, casting doubt on this theory. Others proposed that it might be a horseshoe crab, but the images seemed to show a triop of enormous proportions. Some skeptics pointed out that the creature might actually be smaller than claimed, around 5 inches, judging from the details and the concrete surrounding it. Still though, even at size, it would be remarkably large for a triop. Up Island Spider the Up Island Spider, also known as the Heresy House Spider, is a creature said to inhabit Ellsboro, Maine, specifically the upper end of the island. This creature is believed to be a species of unusually large wolf spider. It is described as a dark brown spider with red eyes resembling wolf spiders common in the United States, but distinguished by its significant size, with some reports testing it spans up to 8 inches with its legs extended. Uniquely, some specimens are reported large and heavy enough to produce audible footsteps in quiet environments which is pretty scary thinking of hearing the footsteps of a giant spider. Like wolf spiders, the up island spider is known to carry its newly hatched young on its back and hunts by pouncing on its prey. It doesn't construct webs or nets, but is capable of producing strands of silk, presumably to aid in mobility. The spider is believed to have a limited habitat, confined to a small area above the narrow tidal isthmus connecting the northern and southern halves of Ellsboro. Local lore suggests that the center of the spider's population is around a local church, linked to speculation that these spiders might have arrived on the island in a coffin, thus the alternative name Here's House Spider. There have been some reports of sightings down island, but these spiders appear to be smaller and less common compared to those frequently seen up island. While intriguing, it's important to note that the existence of a unique spider species solely in this area is highly unlikely. 
It's more plausible that sightings of the upland spider are actually encounters with large specimens of more common spider species like fishing spiders, wolf spiders, or even orb weavers, which are known to inhabit Maine and can appear startlingly large. These sightings often become exaggerated in retellings, possibly contributing to the legend of the upland spider. Surviving Rocky Mountain Locust The Rocky Mountain Locust was a notable species of grasshopper that caused significant damage to farms in the United States during the 19th century. These locusts were particularly problematic as farming expanded into the west, their favorite habitat. Major swarms occurred between 1873 and 1877, inflicting immense damage in several states including Colorado, Kansas, Minnesota, Mississippi, and Nebraska. The locusts were so numerous that they could block out the sun, and they consumed not only crops but also materials like leather, wood, and wool. Even trains were sometimes halted by the sheer number of locusts on the rail. Various methods were attempted to control the swarms, including the use of gunpowder, fires, poison, and even vacuum cleaner devices, but these efforts were largely unsuccessful. In response to the devastation, states like Nebraska and Mississippi offered bounties for collected locusts, and farmers eventually adopted new agriculture practices that contributed to the downfall of the species. The Rocky Mountain locust is believed to have gone extinct due to the destruction of its breeding grounds in the Rocky Mountains by human activities such as plowing, irrigation, and cattle grazing. This habitat destruction likely eliminated the eggs of the locusts. Interestingly, while locusts are a form of grasshopper that appear in high density conditions, attempts to recreate these conditions with other grasshopper species did not result in the re-emergence of the Rocky Mountain locust. The species end up formally declared extinct in 2014. The entry's name comes from a theory I couldn't find too much about, but it's basically about these species still living in solitary groups that aren't able to be detected by us. So that ends the video, thank you for watching. Let me know any topics you guys would like to see next. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one.